All right, so there's one other thing, or well, there are a couple other things I want to show you, but one primarily that's going to help you out. Um, generally speaking, we don't need to get into too much more detail here. I'll show you a few other things that are going to be necessary per the other detail. Um, so I want to show you repeating detail components. Um, I don't know that I'll show you how to modify them yet, but I do want to show you that they're there um, and, and that if you find a repeating detail component family, for like siding or something like that, you can use it. Uh, so anyway, repeating detail components are listed under the component menu, but you have to click the arrow to pull down the menu. Um, and it's right here, repeating detail components. So um, the important part to note about this is uh, these are line-based components. Just like you, um, when we drew these uh, plywood pieces, you just drew a line and it just kind of stretched along the line. Um, these, you have to click a spot and then literally drag it down. And as it reaches that next threshold, the next item shows up. Does that make sense? So um, I don't know which families are preloaded. It might just be brick. Yeah, it looks like it's brick. Um, let's see if there's another um, repeating detail component. Uh, let's see. We're going to go to detail items. Let's go to wood and plastic. Uh, not sheathing, not glue lamb, millwork, architectural woodwork. No. Hang on, let me do a quick Google and see if there's a standard one. Okay, so um, it's actually under, when you go to insert it, go to detail items and go to division seven, uh, thermal and moisture protection. Uh, this is where you're gonna find like roofing and siding. So let's go to siding. Oh, no, I don't think that's it. Uh, let's go to... No. Huh. It's weird. That doesn't look right. Well, anyway, there should be more, but uh, anyway, so it functions the same way, okay? So... Uh, so basically you would just draw, these are just profile and like region components and stuff like that. And, um, we'll, we'll get there. I'll probably show you in another vid video, uh, how to, how to actually create it. Um, but anyway, you would just take that and just kind of draw this down here. Uh, the other thing I want to show you, I guess, is, uh, the actual text. So, um, text here is, is pretty simple. You guys just have to, you know, create a text type that's going to work for the, for the detailing. Um, Stuff like, um, uh, what, what do I want to say? So stuff like these slopes are not smart. So those are just drafting components that you draw in. So if you need an arrow, you can just draw a slope arrow. Um, and yeah, you know what? Let's just do a detail. Let's do a repeating detail component. You need to know how to do that. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to go down into families. Uh, okay, actually, let me pause for a moment. Um, Anytime you need to modify like a system family, you have to do it down here under families. Okay, so if it's anything smarter than like a box family, like a table or something like that, that you get uh, and, and load via the components menu, uh, you need to kind of modify it down here. So we need to find that repeating detail component and we're gonna modify that. So let's go back here. Uh, it is called uh, repeating detail brick. I don't know why it would show it there. We're gonna go to detail items, um, brick standard. Oh, you know what? We need to draw another profile. All right, let's do it this way. Um, there we go. Running section. All right, so um, we're gonna go to running section and we're gonna modify running section. Um, so I'm gonna right click on uh, brick standard. Okay, so that's that's really important. Make sure that you're not right clicking on uh, running um, running bond. Just go to uh, brick standard and go to edit. So um, this is kind of how this thing works, right? We have uh, we have regions and then we have uh, lines, right? So this one happens to be like a brick with a mortar joint, and that's what that line represents is the gap for the mortar joint. But for us, and I'm gonna draw it in place while we're working on this, 
um, we can create a new region. So I selected the region and I just hit CS. Um, if I want to um, create like a lap siding, I'm going to overly simplify it. It's not going to be very detailed at all. Um, so I'm just going to create a rectangle that looks something like this. So if we want it to be like an 8 inch lap siding, um, we can change this to 8 inches. Actually, because it's going to be overlapped. So um, let's, let's, yeah, let's make it uh, 10 inches. And then I'm going to change uh, the depth of it to be half of an inch. It's probably a little too thin, but that's all right. OK, so um, what I need to do is calibrate this so that it is, um, so that it is actually a, a cadence of um, 8 inches on center. So basically, if I uh, copy this down, I'm going to copy it down 2 inches. right? And what I need to do is rotate this so that it will accommodate that other one. So if I'm rotating this one, for instance, um, from here, I'm going to rotate it just like 5 degrees. And then this one rotates. I don't think that's going to work, actually. Hang on. Oh, I know what I did wrong. My bad. Um, not Don't move it down 2 inches. You want to move it down 8 inches. We want 2 inches of overlap is what we want. So uh, I need to move this down six more inches. Does that make sense? Because we want two inches of overlap because it's a 10 inch piece and we want them to be eight inches on center. Okay. So um, anyway, what we can do is um, I'm going to rotate from the uh, front corner to the back corner right here and then I'm just going to pull it out until it gets uh, a little bit over so it laps over enough that it clears it. Whoops. There we go. That's perfect. Okay, I don't need to rotate the bottom one because that one's going to go away. The reason is um, when I, let me just uh, kind of set this profile here. Um, doesn't matter what the region is, that, uh, the region style that you want to pick. If you want to do a dash one, you know, we'll, don't worry about the pattern for now. Um, but this goes away. Uh, this can actually go away too. Um, and, and we're going to use this as our new basis to, to create it. So, um, but you need to save it as a new name. Does that make sense? Yes, Kevin. Okay, so, oh, another thing I want to check. No, that's all right. So let's do save as, I'm gonna save this. Um, I'm just going to put it in my general folder for now. We're going to call this lap siding. And then we can load that in. Okay, um, it will give you this little error that says it can't create it in this view. That's because it's just a profile for now, so we can't do anything with it. Um, if I want to go to, oops, where's my detail? There we go. All right. So um, I'm going to say edit type. I'm going to duplicate this, and I'm going to call this um, lap siding. And I hope I got my origin point correct. I might have it upside down. Um, so here's the important part, right? Now you've got, uh, <laughs> whoops. I didn't mean to have running section, row lock, and soldier in there. Hang on. Let's go back to that profile. Um, all right, so I'm back in the profile for lap siding. Um, go to the um, family types and you can actually rename and get rid of some of this extra stuff. Uh, so I don't need these parameters either. So I'm actually just going to delete them. Do I need those? I don't think I need them. Um, and then you can rename this to just lap siding eight inches. Hit OK. Um, Oh, and then uh, most importantly, you can actually get rid of these other ones. So I'm going to go to row lock, get rid of that. Soldier and plan, get rid of that. All right, so now we just got a lap siding eight inches, and that's fine. Now load it in. 
All right, so now um, we've got brick. I'm going to edit that, duplicate it, call it lap siding, and it's probably not going to be totally correct. But. So we've got uh, lap siding, lap siding, eight inches, and then the key here is just change your spacing to eight inches, right? Ten inch piece, eight inch on center, so we have a two inch overlap. And then we hit OK. So there's one, there's two, three, four, five. Okay? Two, three, four. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, it's not in the right location, so I've got to uh, recall exactly where, <coughs> what that other one was based off of. But uh, yeah, anyway, that's the gist of it. I'll get this calibrated in just a second. But what questions do you have? All right, hang on a moment while I figure out why, <laughs> where our base is. Okay, guys, um, I'm just gonna, uh, I think what, I think I know what happened. So originally the brick was, um, the, the, the mortar of the brick was underneath the brick, but the profile was drawn where the mortar joint was on top. So I think we're actually just upside down. And um, if, so if you need to see the, the um, reference planes and everything for the family, they're actually by default in this family turned off. So hit VV, and that's going to pull up your visibility graphic overrides. Um, and then in the annotation categories, you can turn on reference planes and dimensions, and that's where you're going to see uh, this. So you don't need all of these. Um, these are things that if you wanted to change it parametrically, you could when it was brick, um, but we don't have that. So we just need to move this to the origin. And the origin, um, I believe is right here. So as long as you move um, yeah, this to there, you should be good to go. Okay, and, and don't worry about all the other stuff. If you wanna get rid of some of these other reference planes, you actually can, um, like that. And then just leave that origin. And now load that in and uh, let's go to that section. So now the line should be, it should be right on the line. Oh, I see what's going on. We're actually on the wrong side, too. So this, this is technically the origin down here. I think the whole thing is actually upside down, but that's okay. Override. There you go. Now, uh, yeah, okay. I see what's going on. Shoot. That's annoying. Um, rotate this whole thing around for me, guys. I know I'm... I'm totally confusing you right now, but um, there. This whole thing is upside down. There we go. That's what I was trying to get was the line uh, right on the corner of, of the lap siding. So now when, uh, when we draw this thing, I'm going to go to uh, annotate. I'm going to go to repeating detail component, and I'm drawing not that. Go to lap siding. And I'm quite literally just going to draw it down the face of my building. Does that make sense? I don't know why that family was built upside down. It is infuriating me. But it doesn't make sense, so why it wouldn't be correct the way you had it previously? Uh, with the line on the wall that you're drawing from. It would have functioned, um, but I would have had to draw from the bottom up. And I didn't want to draw from the bottom up because... Um, I wanted the origin point, like wherever I click, to be where it starts. I wanted it to be right there. And the family was just kind of built backwards. Um, otherwise, if I wanted to go you know, bottom up, I could have done that, and it would have been you know, shedding this way. But then I would have had that gap at the bottom because it's actually ending going out. Does that make sense? That's what it was doing previously. So um, now you guys understand why if a Revit teacher tries to teach you families right off the bat, they're doing it wrong because families are a pain in the ass. Okay? Uh, yeah, they are. They're, they're a total pain in the ass. Like, I, when I first started learning Revit, um, I took, like, an online Revit class, and one of the first things that they tried to teach was families. And it was the most confusing experience I ever went through in my entire life. So, like, for the first two to three months of you guys working in Revit in an office, don't work on families. Find somebody who's better than you to do family stuff, and you just focus on, like, red lines, annotations, fixing walls and windows and doors and stuff like that. Okay? Cool. 
Word from the wise. Thank you, Kevin. You're welcome.